Oh, well welcome back! In the previous video, we covered the crazy world of multivariate and bivariate mapping, and now you want to know how to make them in ArcGIS Pro. Well, I'll show you how to make some of them. There's an infinite number, infinite number of multivariate maps that you can make. I'll show you some of the ways that I use ArcGIS Pro to make multivariate maps. Ready? So here we are in Pro, and I'll be using the UN's happiness data. The data is from 2017. I don't know if a whole lot's changed in happiness since 2017, other than the fact that everybody would be unhappy now. <laughs> anyway, here is a simple, uh, let's look at the symbology, a simple graduated color look at the World Happiness Index, coding the fill of all of these polygons. The lighter areas are less happy, self-rated by the way a, a survey that's sent out to people and more happy for dark green what's this little gear here check this out i want to show you this if i click this there's a little checkbox that says apply to fill but you can also apply to the outline or outline and fill that's really cool let me turn this off this is essentially a million copies in this demo of the same data so i'm trying to isolate the variables and just showing you one data set a million ways to make multivariate maps so here we are where i have applied the color coding to the outlines of these polygons. That's kind of interesting. The reason I'm showing it to you in a multivariate or bivariate map demo is because you could use a layer that used fill with one data and then color the outlines by something else entirely. And now we have a bivariate map showing two different data sets. Now I have to admit, I don't really see maps like this and it's kind of confusing. So let's turn this off. Instead, let's take a look at just the typical fill. Now, this is still color coded by the happiness rating, but let's try something called a value by alpha. I'll open the symbology panel and we've got graduated colors for happiness, just like before. But there's this really interesting little green box over here that when I mouse over it, it says, vary symbology by attribute. And you might be asking yourself, well, wait a second, isn't that what we're doing here in the primary symbology tab? And the answer is yes. If I had my way, this would say, vary symbology by even more attributes. Let's see what it's got. Transparency and outline width. That's kind of interesting. Let's look at transparency. You might use transparency to fade out places of low population, perhaps. I have an attribute called unexplained. Maybe you have some uncertainty values in your data that you want to merge into your visualization. How strong, how certain or uncertain you are, you could use opacity. And you can change these values. So very uncertain, I'll make highly transparent. I always have to think about transparency. And then very confident places, I'll make 0% transparent. You can also drag these uh, the slider range along an interactive histogram here. My, my data is actually plotted along this histogram, which is pretty neat. And maybe you want to fine tune it or exclude some outliers. You can drag this manually and reposition the bookends of this linear opacity gradient. And you can, you can show uncertainty in that way or a population or lack thereof in this way. So that's a value by alpha technique. Let's move on to graduated symbols. Not all countries are equally sized and some very geographically small countries have a lot of people. How do we treat that a little more fairly? Well, you could try using graduated symbols. Now, graduated symbols just represent an attribute via a scaled up graphic. In this case, we're just using a simple ring and it's automatically placed at the center of our area. And if I zoom in, you can we can kind of declutter that a little bit. Everything has its own trade-offs, you know? Uh, if, I, if I zoom out, I've got a lot of overlap and it can be very confusing. But if I'm using a different scale, maybe this would be a useful technique. But again, this is just one variable. And I've got lots of attributes in this data. So this is just showing the happiness index for each country. But there are actually six constituent parts of this data that talk about different ways that people can be happy, different happiness drivers. So let's take a look at those. Maybe I wanted to show them individually at the same time. What kind of a world are we living in if this sort of thing is possible? Well, let's see. Turn this off and we'll open up this and we've got six categories of happiness. One of them is income, so we can do a graduated symbol by income and duplicate our layer and change it to another attribute. In this case, it's trust in government. And I'll use a different color, a different color for health expectations, a different color for social support system, 
a sense of freedom and giving and generosity. How much do you give to charity? These are things that people think contribute to a sense of well-being and happiness. And we have six attributes here. We're showing six variables concurrently. This is definitely a multivariate map. Is this a good multivariate map? I would say no, it's not a very good multivariate map. It's interesting visually, but overall we, we've got some issues understanding this. We also have to deal with that whole issue of cognitive load. There's so much going on here. You need a pretty complex legend to explain this. And even still, a map reader would struggle really grasping this. And even if you're really looking at it and studying it, you might not be home free because you've got problems of overlap. The rings might be very similar in value to each other and stack up. Occlusion is where one thing covers up another thing, and it can be a real problem in cartography, particularly 3D cartography. Let's take a look at an alternative. So I'll turn this off. Let's just imagine if I have multiple rings, but each ring I've simply offset it in a certain direction so that when we show all of these graduated symbols at once and then unify them with a little hub and spoke graphic to help visually track this as a single cluster, we've got a pretty interesting multivariate symbol happening here. It's uh, like a ring of happiness or a bouquet of happiness. The different colors and directions correspond with the different happiness drivers and their relative scale compared to each other is low happiness or high happiness. Now, is there any way that you can make a complex multivariate symbol like this without having to just stack up tons and tons of layers? Yeah, of course. Really, we're just making a weird, bizarre chart here. So why not just make use of actual charts? ArcGIS Pro lets you use charts as symbols. So if I right click and choose the symbology for this, I can see a bar chart. Each country has a little bar chart. The height of each bar has to do with the relative strength of that happiness variable. Pretty interesting, right? And bars are good because the human eye and mind are pretty adept at seeing the comparative height of something and understanding it in a comparative quantitative sense. We're less good at understanding volume as they compare with each other and area as they compare with each other, but we're really good at comparing the heights of things. Um, there's also a stacked bar chart option, which I've turned sideways, which looks kind of interesting. And all of these bar charts are just available as an option in this primary symbology. Then lastly, we'll look at pie charts. Yes, you can map pie charts per feature. And each feature is showing me six individual attributes and then one cumulative overall additive attribute. So this is an interesting method for making multivariate maps. Now here we are back with our standard graduated symbol. I wanna show you something pretty interesting. So you've seen me use this very symbology by attribute tab, but this is a point feature and there's a couple more options here. So uh, we've got transparency. Let's take a look at color. If I drop down color, I can choose another attribute. And in this case, let's say happiness index. And now I'm mapping size for the happiness index and color for the happiness index, I tricked you. This is not a bivariate map. This is actually kind of the inverse of a bivariate map. This is a symbology type that's showing you redundant cues. Two visual dimensions are corresponding to the same attribute. If you really wanna drive something home visually to your audience, use redundant cues. They don't have to um, spend a whole lot of mental horsepower figuring this out. Bigger and darker, means more, smaller and lighter means less. Redundant cues, so applying two visual dimensions to the same bit of data. But let's talk about bivariate maps again, okay? So we'll pick a different attribute here. This time we'll say to what percentage income is estimated to have an impact on uh, happiness. Now you've got size corresponding to overall happiness and then color corresponding to something else. And you might have some anomalous things happening here and that's why it's so interesting you could have large happiness but they don't really care much about income or you've got um, quite um, low happiness ratings but as far as income is concerned that's not the issue in this location those are interesting comparisons to make interesting relationships reveal themselves and it's very easy to just pick different attributes here in this case um, very large happiness 
scores might not necessarily correspond all that much to having a strong social support system, a network of friends who you can count on. That's interesting. I'm gonna show you baked in intentional method of bivariate mapping available in ArcGIS Pro. So with this polygon layer of world happiness data, instead of single symbol as my primary symbology, I'll pick bivariate colors. There's that word, bivariate, two variables. I'll pick this and immediately something interesting is going on. We pick two fields. So let's take a look at, well, it's already selected this for us. So income, so GDP is income, and then social support system. Countries that make a lot of money are pinker, and countries that have very strong social support networks are bluer. And where they're this kind of dark purple, there's a strong instance of both of those, of both of those things happening at the same time. Um, so you make a lot of money and you've got a lot of friends, I suppose, or you can trust your friends. In the light areas, you don't have a lot of money and you don't have a very strong social support network. Pretty interesting, but especially interesting is the places where you've got high income, but not many friends. So pink areas. Conversely, you've got areas where you have a really good social support system, but not a lot of money. It's like a Crosby, Stills and Nash kind of song. Okay, I wanna show you one last multivariate trick. And this is easily the most multivariate of them all. It's bananas. If I select my graduated symbol layer and we'll go back to our trusty old Vary Symbology by Attribute tab, down here at the bottom is a little checkbox called Allow Symbol Property Connections. Allow Symbol Property Connections? What does that mean? Well, when this is checked and I dig into my template symbology, Every visual component can be tied to data. And you get these cute little add data connection icons, the offset distance, the rotation angle, size, outline width, color, fill color. It's amazing. So let's just play with a crazy idea. We'll tie outline width to data. Instead of just being a standard one point, it can be data driven. So we'll choose its happiness ranking. And if we hit okay, there's some really thick outlines. That's okay we can modify this formula with an expression builder. And I'll reduce its size by 100. Isn't that fun? There's just no end to the ways of multivariate mapping. Well, that was a lot of maps. Too many maps? I don't know, can you have too many maps? It was a lot of variables crammed into individual maps, that's for sure. Well, I hope you learned a few things. I hope you're interested in trying out some of these techniques and I'd love to see what you come up with, by the way. Now, stick with me because in the next video, part three of three, I'm gonna be showing you different ways of making multivariate maps in ArcGIS online. Yes, on the web. See you there.